Hi, I'm Linda Ruth of PSCS. The other day I was looking at my newsstand and thinking about the things that have stayed the same and the things that have changed and evolved over the last couple of years of newsstand publishing. One of the first things I saw that really has not changed over the past 20 years is the importance of putting your product on the cover. Every special interest publisher needs to have that focus of special interest front and center on the cover of every issue of their magazine, whether it's gardens or guitars, whether it's homes or hunting, whether it's boats or bayonets, that's what has to be on the cover as your cover image visible for almost every issue of your magazine. It's what will inspire your audience to buy. Another thing that hasn't changed is the effectiveness of new or topical covers. Guitar World magazine had an archive of content covering prints and Weekly Standard was able very quickly to pull together a CUEU article. In fact, the CUEU was out before the Brexit vote. Both of them really found that sweet spot between the interest of their readers and the incredible topicality of their topics. Both those covers, as you can imagine, are doing very well on the newsstand. One thing that seems to have changed is background colors. A couple of decades ago, it was widely understood that in order to sell well, your magazine cover needed to have a light or a white background. It was a truism that every newsstand person knew. This month, I found five publications with white or light backgrounds, of which two of them are doing actually fairly worse than average. I'll leave you to figure out which two it is, but it looks as if light and white covers are no longer the standard fix that they used to be. On the other hand, black covers have become incredibly prolific and widespread throughout the industry. Walk to any newsstand and you'll see a startling number of covers that are either quite dark or black, or, you know, as you see from the examples here, even straight black and white with one highlight cover. That's the kind of approach that when the publication is on a newsstand with a lot of light or colorful covers can make it jump right out. How the approach is going to work when the newsstand is saturated with publications with this color scheme, we'll have to wait and see. Two new publications, Dumbo Feather and Bee, tap into another old tenancy which is becoming new again. Print publications have always been important for the special interest community to rally around, to use as a way to help them cohere. But now the special interest around which many communities are cohering is the passion and purpose itself, not just the passion and purpose of a third special interest, but just the very passion and purpose. Dumbo Feather, Conversations with Extraordinary People, is an import from Australia, and its tag is Passion Purpose Community. B Magazine is a launch covering B corporations, for-profit corporations that aim to do good in the world. And both of them tap into this desire for connectedness and purpose that is greater than it was a decade or two decades ago. And that leads us to a third publication, which also taps in to the purpose and community elements that we just spoke about. And it's Live With Heart and Soul, a Christian magazine that's geared towards women. The publisher of Live With Heart and Soul identified something that she felt was missing from the market, and that was hope and love. 
Now, it's interesting because positive cover lines has always been an important part of newsstand sales. You really want to tell somebody not that they're going to, for example, lose 10 pounds of ugly fat, but they're going to be fit and gorgeous by Christmas. However, cynicism and controversy is also very important in terms of stirring up interest and in generating sales. What Live With Heart and Soul realized is that the balance has gone too far towards cynicism and controversy. And what needs to be brought back is a positive, hopeful message. And that's what they provide. And they provide something else too, a full interactive experience of a sort which is unique, which wouldn't be available to their online audience. Every one of these publishers has both a print and an online audience, of course, but what they're aiming to do with their print publications is provide something they can't do as effectively online. What that is with Live in Heart and Soul is daily devotionals, so that every day uh, the Live with Heart and Soul reader can pick up this magazine again and look for the devotional of the day and spend a few minutes with it. Another interactive, a couple other examples of interactive physical experiences that print publications can offer come from Savor Life magazine and Enchanted Owls. Savor Life is a magazine for women entrepreneurs and it includes guided worksheets that help women achieving those goals through implementing their strategies and tactics. So again, it's a publication that the reader can keep, the, keep day in and day out and pick up and revisit to go through their worksheets and figure out what kind of progress they're making. And of course, Enchanted Owls is the category that's getting all the buzz lately, which is adult coloring books. Definitely an interactive print experience not available in other formats. But the interactive physical experience also encompasses the physical product itself, not just what you can do with the product, but the way the product feels. And publishers of print are going towards high quality premium products, not only through their use of for color and the quality of the paper, which has gotten really remarkably high, but also through what they're doing with their covers. Western Horse and Gun recently switched from a gloss cover to a matte cover, and they find their readership really enjoys that tactile sense they got, they get from it. Pages Magazine goes one further and has a matte cover which is actually so textured as to be bumpy. And Amplify has, that's Samir Husney's magazine from his class at um, Old Miss uh, Journalism School, Magazine Innovation Center. And it's so tactile as to have almost a sandpaper feel to it. This really plays into the fact that picking up a magazine hits you on your senses in ways that other kinds of media cannot. And I wanted to end with the Old Farmer's Almanac, which is simultaneously one of our oldest and newest publications. That cover you see is very similar to the cover that Old Farmer's Almanac launched with 225 years ago. And yet it's new as well. The entire cover has been vectorized and digitized, so now it works no matter what the format. It works in big format, it works in small format, it works in print, it works digitally. It's not going to lose its integrity through copying or digitizing or printing or resizing. And similarly, its content has stayed the same and evolved. It's still useful with a pleasant degree of humor. It's still whimsical and it still has the moon and the tides. 
content has evolved to meet the changing needs and interests and tastes of today's reader. So it's the same publication that your parents and grandparents and great-grandparents have always read, and it's also a brand new publication for today's audience and selling more copies than ever before. If you have any questions or like to share your thoughts, please go ahead and give me a call at 603-924-4407. I'd love to speak to you about this. Thanks. Bye.